If you're writing blog posts, articles, AI content in general, you are going to like what I'm going to show you in this video because it's going to increase by 10x the quality of any content you are, you are producing right now. If you are using any of the mainstream AIs, you're probably aware of the limitations they come with. So for instance, uh, let's take ChatGPT, right? It has the knowledge cutoff, which means that it doesn't know anything of what happened after 2021. This means that if you are in a niche where you need to be writing content of stuff that happened recently, uh, you're pretty much out of luck. What I'm going to show you in this video is going to uh, solve actually that issue. And this also brings us to a second uh, problem, which is hallucination, which means that whenever ChatGPT doesn't know about, like it has like a knowledge gap uh, or doesn't know about something, it will kind of like try to make up for it and come up with um, kind of like inference. It's kind of like what humans do. It's just that probably sometimes it does it when it shouldn't do it. So I will uh, show you what's uh, the problem and how we can solve this problem as well. So I'm in ChatGPT now. I'm using the 3.5. I think it's it's more than enough to show like this. You can even like use the free ChatGPT. You don't even need to use uh, the paid or the GPT-4. It's going to maybe in in improve a little bit uh, the results in certain niches. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write me an article of uh, using knowledge first. Well, it should have the knowledge, but because it can be sure it can do it, it will hallucinate and uh, and try to come up with like a smart solution answer. So uh, my, my background is in data. Um, so if you're in a, in a different background, uh, this should also apply. But I thought that the, um, coding was kind of like a very strict fact checking kind of like background uh, to showcase this. So I'm going to ask him, write, so use Markdown to write a small article about how to union to streams in KSQL DB. Don't worry, you don't have to like know about this. Uh, I'm going to explain along the way. Uh, use bold um, um, words and this just to make it a bit more. Um, Now, um, step by step, you need SQL DB server. Now you need to create the stream. So basically you want to union these two strings. Now create the stream. Now this is the problem here, right? If you look at KSQL DB, it doesn't support the union operator operation. It has never support the union operation. Not even like before, oops, not even before 2021, not after. So even up to this day, it doesn't support it. So I think right now what it's trying to do is kind of like trying to make up for this. And since it's kind of like SQL, if you have used SQL, SQL comes with like this union operator. Uh, KSQL is completely different. So it's just trying to like uh, fill the gap. And here is wrong because uh, if you would run this, this doesn't work. Now I'm going to show you uh, how we can solve this very easily. So I'm going to go to the tool or platform that so I have been working uh, building this platform for myself. Uh, I run a few other uh, websites um, based on data. Actually, one of them is Topictail. But and so like um, so when you enter, uh, you would see something like this. You have libraries, and right now I have one which is kind of like uh, gathering uh, information about this niche. So um, I has uh, a few of my websites and then also the, the official documentation, for instance, and so on. So what I can do here is, so basically this is kind of like, it builds a search engine for you uh, where you can use like get text fragments um, very easily that you can use then in ChatGPT. So if I do how to union two streams in KSQLDB, now it gives me like fragments from like the sources I have in this library. And you can like, Tune. So I would I could like uh, add more on the top or okay I think this one is a, it's not relevant so I can just remove it and so you can kind of like tune it. Um, this is especially good if you are an expert already on this field because you can input your the expertise you already have and kind of like even tune it even more. But I'm just gonna go like with a plain just plain like dump way of doing this. Use how do you just input like just input the topic search. Right, all these all these ones uh, came up. Uh, I just copy this. I go to ChatGPT, and instead of like, so I'm gonna just like 
regenerate this, but with kind of like, this is a bit of like prompt engineering in the sense of like, you are kind of like giving, embedding more things and like with the sources and everything. So yeah, let's see. Save and submit. KSQL is a powerful stream, blah, 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 blah. While KSQL DB provides support for joining streams and tables, it doesn't natively support the union statement. That's great. That's what we want. This is like actually very accurate. However, there is a workaround to achieve this functionality. This is actually really good because in the official documentation, it doesn't um, explain this workaround. Uh, it means that it's like getting the knowledge from the other sources I have that, they, that are not the official documentation. And so like basically it creates a new stream and then like with the first stream and then like inserts into the first one, the second one, which is the, the nice, the right way of doing this. Um, it's also important, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it also gives you some uh, actually like more additional information about like that you can do joins if you if you really want to do a different thing, blah, blah. And also like adds links. The link and like sourcing part is also kind of like, when you think about it, if you only use ChatGPT, you have, um, so I, I write about this in the landing page, but essentially, it's kind of like a very unnatural way to uh, write content. Because first of all, if you write content as an expert, you're going to probably have like a thousand different sources <laughs> to link to that are not yours. And that's kind of like, I think Google knows about this. And uh, if you are in a very niche ex expert uh, or I don't know, like any pretty niche that you want to be like uh, very narrow on your topic, um, you're going to have like sources uh, pointing somewhere like official pages, official stuff that you are kind of like supporting your statements on. So having a library where all the sources are tracked and then using that uh, to generate your content and then like having ChatGPT to kind of like externally link those sources, I think that's kind of like a more organic way of uh, writing articles as well. I want to also talk about the philosophy behind this tool. When you want to rank for a certain keywords on Google, the it's very likely that your competitors are also using either ChatGPT or, you know, one of the mainstreams because there are not that many when you think about it. And if you are generating content the same way that your competitors are, you're not going to outrank them. So what would be the best way, like in a non-AI world, what you would be going for is trying to like get uh, unique content, essentially. Uh, content that none of your competitors have. Now, if you're using chat, if everybody's using ChatGPT, everybody is going to have the same content eventually. Um, I've seen kind of like good solutions, well, so, some better solutions that use using raw ChatGPT, which is like, I know this one has, it was uh, very controversial, but uh, Surfer uh, AI is, was using, or is using um, the SERP, um, websites to extract content for, from them and then use that content to generate articles for you. Now, this is better than just using ChatGPT, like normal ChatGPT, and obviously it's going to help with like also recent uh, information type of, but it's not going to generate unique content that no, nobody in, in that search uh, already has. So I think like for like uh, talking about few logs now, I think that's kind of like a step forward in a sense of like, you can like, um, create your own library. Even like if, if other people are using few logs, everybody's going to have a different type of library. Everybody probably is going to have different sources. You can ingest like um, books you bought. You can ingest like notes you created on Notion. Um, you can um, um, like ingest certain uh, YouTube uh, channels you know about, very niche, people you follow, uh, certain uh, websites that are very also niche. Uh, I'm working on like adding a lot of um, this type of integrations so that people can like just ingest whatever uh, they need to. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the philosophy behind to be able to kind of like have so much content that is not out there. Like if you are using, um, uh, if you are only using the content that your competitors already have, you are never going to outperform them. But if you have access to uh, new content, especially offline content, if you are running like, let's say a physics uh, web website, if you are using only uh, content that is already on the on, on websites in your search uh, that or your competitors already have, so you're not going to outrank them. But if you are like starting like to ingest a physics book 
like very old physics books and and try to like uh, link with uh, theorems that like nobody in your search have i think like well google knows about this uh, this is kind of like into the topical authority uh, like be able to like have like really good topical maps be able to like link and everything i think this tool is really good for that uh, it was built for topical authority to be able to like um, go as deep as you can in a topic and not be limited by how much your AI knows about that topic. You can just keep enhancing uh, the AI with all the knowledge you already have and just keep going uh, and go as deep as you need in any, to in, in, in any niche or any topical map you want to, to build.